Good morning, gorgeous. How are you ladies doing this morning? I hope you're all doing wonderful. For those of you who are here for the very first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Michelle Da, and you're listening to A Feminine Impression. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Thank you for being here for another video and session in Feminine Rehab. We're continuing our series, Beauty and Boundaries, and today we're talking about boundaries in pregnancy and childbirth. If you've been here with my other videos and you know we've been talking about boundaries in lots of different areas in your life, boundaries with your family, boundaries with your friends, boundaries at work, boundaries with yourself. But this is a very sensitive area that you probably wouldn't realize how important boundaries are until you're already in the situation. So if you're watching this, maybe you're pregnant, maybe you plan on being pregnant one day, maybe you have children, or you know someone who has children. Regardless, it's important information for anyone who's going into this chapter in their lives. So I want you to go ahead and sit back, relax, get something to drink, get something to write with, and let's talk about it. Before we start the video, I invite you to visit my website, findforever.com, and purchase my fragrance, 2911. 2911 is a beautiful feminine fragrance that you're sure to love. Now, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Ladies, it's so important that you spend time becoming the person that you want to be and you get assistance doing that. Therapy is a wonderful tool for being able to unpack your past or to help you with your future goals. As a psychologist, I believe everyone should have therapy at some point in their life to better themselves. And BetterHelp can help. BetterHelp is an online therapy platform that has therapists that you can talk to over the phone or in a live session. The great thing is you don't have to show your face, you can turn your camera off, it's affordable, and you can get matched with a therapist in 48 hours. As a listener, you can receive 10% off of your service by using the code FEMININE. So visit BetterHelp today at B-E-T-T-E-R h e l p dot com slash feminine. In terms of having boundaries as someone who is pregnant, pregnancy is one of those times in our lives where we are very sensitive. Our hormones are sort of all over the place and you're expecting this brand new life. But during this time, there's a lot of commotion that comes from your inner thoughts, family, friends, medical providers, and maybe even your spouse. So setting up boundaries and learning what you feel comfortable with in terms of sharing, in terms of discussing, and in terms of what you want for your life is going to be important before you even enter this process. One of the first areas of having boundaries in terms of pregnancy and childbirth is answering questions. When you're pregnant, there are so many questions that people are going to ask from the moment they find out you're pregnant. They're going to ask whether or not it was planned. They're going to ask how many kids you want. They're going to ask if you want to know the gender or if you know the gender. They're going to ask you so many things that you probably can't even imagine having to answer. And this will come from everyone. So the same questions will keep coming up. And if you're uncomfortable answering them, it's going to be obvious. And it will probably get annoying because it happens so often. So preparing yourself and determining what questions you feel comfortable answering and what questions you do not want to answer is necessary. So I'm going to give you some examples of some questions that people might ask you. They may ask you whether you plan on breastfeeding or if you plan on using formula with your child. They may ask if you want to have your birth as a sort of vaginal natural birth or if you plan on having a C-section. And these are all things that you may not even have answers to and you may not want to talk about with a complete stranger. So setting up boundaries by learning what to say in those circumstances is important. Remember, when it comes to boundaries, you do not have to do anything. You don't have to answer their questions. Even if you have an answer, your answer can be, I'm not sure. I don't know yet. I'm still thinking about it. I have to do more research and moving forward. And if you want to know what their thoughts are, you can say, what do you think? Or what was your experience like? But remember that these comments and these stories are things that are going to stick with you. And you don't want any negative energy, any limiting 
energy or stories around you during this time. You want people who are going to uplift you, positivity, people who are going to speak without judgment during this time in your life. You may also have some boundary violations in terms of people monitoring you. Okay, when you're pregnant, especially when you have family members who love you and care for you and friends and anyone who maybe knows you and sees you often may want to monitor what you're doing, what you're eating, what you're not eating, how much exercise you're getting, where you're going. And they may ask frequently or get upset when you do certain things or judge you. So having boundaries looks like letting them know, you know, I I, I can handle this. <laughs> I know what I'm supposed to do or I know what I should and shouldn't eat or this is okay for me. Or, you know, I appreciate you for caring about what I'm eating or where I'm going, but I really want to be able to enjoy my pregnancy. And letting them know and feeling confident that this is a special time for you. This is a time that you're not going to get back. And people can infringe upon this time and it ends up hurting you if you're not able to speak up for yourself. So for those of you who have some physical boundaries that you don't like being crossed, like being touched, it's important to let them know, like, I I actually don't want anyone to touch my stomach. Some people may ask, is it okay if I touch your stomach? And you can say no. Or you can say yes, okay? If you want that experience, don't be afraid to open up those boundaries and say, sure. Maybe you want that experience of having your mother or your grandmother touching your stomach or feeling your baby kick. It's okay to open up and be vulnerable in that way too. So boundaries always go both ways, okay? It's not just saying no, but it's also learning how to say yes if there's something that you do want to experience. There may also be some boundaries that you may need to pay attention to in terms of your medical care, your care team. That can be a doula, that can be a midwife, that can be your doctor, it can be a nurse practitioner, whoever's working with you throughout your pregnancy. They're going to have questions for you. They're going to have things that they're going to advise, but it's always important for you to think about what you want, for you to pray about it, for you to feel at peace with any decision regarding your body and your baby. And even if they recommend something and you don't feel comfortable with it, this is a time to start learning how to say, I'll think about that, or I don't want that, or I do want this, or can we consider this? Because most of what they're going to do is standard. They're doing what they do with everyone. So you're not unique in that sense. If you don't speak up for yourself, then you can put yourself in a situation that's compromising to you and to your child. This is going to take you being brave. I know with boundaries, so many of you say that you're just afraid to hurt people's feelings. When you're pregnant, it's going to be more than just your feelings. You have a life that you're bringing into the world and someone who you're going to have to stand up for their life until they're 18. You're going to have to speak for this child and advocate for this child. You're going to have to learn how to use your voice. It's going to be more than just about you moving forward. So learning that while you're pregnant and practicing it is crucial. So with your medical team, letting them know during my delivery, this is what I like, this is what I would not like, and being confident in that and not being afraid of your doctor. If you are intimidated by your doctor or your midwife or your doula, then you need to get a new one. And you can. If you have a medical provider that you don't feel comfortable with, maybe they're too aggressive, maybe when you bring up something, they dismiss your thoughts, then ask for someone else. Call and say that you want to switch. It's totally okay to do that, and you should. And if you have a partner or a spouse or someone who's you know, willing to help advocate for you, it's a good time to just let them know that you're struggling. Again, during this time, you may have more hormonal issues. You might be more sensitive. You might cave to things that you normally wouldn't. You may need someone else to help you, but you do have to ask for that help and allow them to be able to step in for you. Another area of boundaries that comes up is boundaries with yourself. During pregnancy, it's very tempting to want to just kind of let loose and do anything you want in terms of what you're consuming, in terms of the food you're consuming, in terms of maybe just binge watching something and kind of just letting time go by. And people will encourage you. Okay, People will say, you're pregnant. It's okay. Eat whatever you want. Do whatever you want. And although it feels good and it sounds good, you know internally when enough is enough. And truly, it can become something that will be a problem for you later after the pregnancy. Sure, it may feel good to eat you know, more than you normally would, but if that will become an issue for you 
once you're done being pregnant because you've changed your brain in terms of how much you think is enough to eat or what you've got used to eating in terms of like certain junk foods. You want to consider that while you're pregnant. Definitely want to enjoy and, you know, do what you normally wouldn't be able to do, but also have limits. Okay, when it comes to personal boundaries, having limits on yourself is so important because people will try to get you off track because it's just something to say. It's just conversation. You know, they're not the ones that have to deal with the repercussions of those things. So I want you to remember that and to also limit yourself even on the things that feel good. And now a message from our sponsor, Thrive Cosmetics. Thrive Cosmetics is a skincare and makeup brand that uses natural ingredients and has a cause. Their products are 100% vegan and cruelty-free. What I love most about this brand is that their products are high-performing. They really do make a difference with the way that your skin looks. Looking more clean and natural is the way to go. And I enjoy using the products in my day-to-day -day skincare routine when I'm just doing simple things like running errands or just around the house where I want to look put together but not fully done up. Thrive Cosmetics has been perfect for that. Lately, I've enjoyed using their Liquid Lash Extension Mascara. This is a product that's been loved by over 20,000 people because it really does add volume and lengthening to my eyelashes. I've really struggled with wearing false lashes and sort of just want to have a lengthened look on a day to day. So this mascara has been wonderful for that. There is no smudging, no clumping or flaking. So I enjoy reaching for this one in my day to day skincare routine. And something that makes this mascara so unique is that it's so easy to remove. You just need a washcloth and a little bit of warm water and it comes off without using any soap. Thrive Cosmetics is so special because they are bigger than beauty. They are a brand with a cause. Thrive Cosmetics donates to causes that affect women, such as emerging from homelessness, domestic violence, fighting abuse, cancer, and more. So this is bigger than beauty. It's truly helping women all over the world. And now is a great time for you to try Thrive Cosmetics for yourself. Head over to their website and receive 15% off of your purchase by using the code Michelle. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash Michelle for 15% off of your first order. Thank you so much Thrive Cosmetics for sponsoring this video for all of these beautiful women. When you're pregnant and you have a spouse and you're going through all these different changes and having conversations with different people, it's so important that you and your spouse are on the same page. Because you're bringing a life into this world together, he's going to have opinions, his family is going to have opinions, and they're going to kind of maneuver those thoughts through him. So he may be telling you things or advising you things, and you may think, where is this coming from? You know he knows nothing about this and probably could care less, but it could have come from his mother or his aunt or his grandmother. And so having conversations that are genuine and letting him know how you feel about certain things and being on the same page matters. Because once that baby gets here, his family and your family are all going to want to have a part in raising that child and a lot of opinions are going to come your way. If you're divided on certain things, then people will be able to tear you down. And that's something you want to get ahead of before the baby gets here. This also involves who is going to be in the room with you during labor. This is one of the most challenging questions that has actually gotten better since COVID has come into play because now the hospitals are more strict about who can be there. But still, it's still a question that comes up. Who do you want in the room with you? There are some people who feel entitled to be in the room with you when you give birth. That could be your own parents. It could be his parents. It can be a friend or a sibling who just feels like they should be able to be there. Or maybe you were in the room when someone else had their baby and they feel like they should be there for yours. But this is a boundary issue. You may not want anyone else in the room with you except your husband, and that's okay. And being brave enough to be able to tell your parents or whoever needs to know that you really just want this to be you and your husband is important. 
And I know it feels scary for those of you who are not used to standing up to your parents and telling them how you feel, for those of you who are afraid of rejection or afraid of confrontation. These things are problematic, especially when you're pregnant and it's harder for you to do things. But you will be so much happier. You'll be so much freer once you do it. It may be challenging during the moment, but once it's out and you've said it and it's their issue to deal with, they have to process it. You are giving them back their issues and people need to be able to handle their own issues as well. For those of you who don't know, I just had my baby 10 weeks ago and this was a major issue for me, being able to tell people certain things that were uncomfortable for me to say. And it impacted the pregnancy. Having all of that anxiety and stress, I could definitely feel the impact with my baby. And it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing to put that stress on your child, on your body, because you're afraid or you have so much anxiety because the people in your life don't make it easy for you to speak your mind. But Again, it's now or never. This is a time you're building yourself up to become a parent and building yourself up to be someone's advocate and standing up to your parents and letting them know how you feel in a respectful and genuine way. This same concept also applies to when the baby comes. There are lots of people who are going to want to come and visit you, and it will be up to you to determine who can come and when they can come. Now with COVID, you have to be more careful than you ever have been in the past. So maybe you would like for your aunts and your uncles and your cousins to come by, but because of COVID, you want to be a little bit more safe, more protective, and that's okay. You never want to put your child's health at risk to please people, okay? Being a people pleaser is challenging enough as its own issue, but when you're involving a life who is helpless, it becomes more important for you to put those things aside and focus on what's important, which is the health of your baby. You may have to say, I would love for you to come see the baby, but right now we want to make sure that he or she is safe. So when they get their shots, you can come visit. And that can be a year from that point. It can be two years from that point. Whenever you want it to be is your decision. And yes, they may get upset. Okay, that's not the point. We know that this is a reality. People have a decision to make. People have a choice. People can choose to get upset. That is their right. And you cannot take their right away from them. Because at that point, you're then being in a role of control. You're trying to control how they feel. And people have a right to feel however they want to feel, even if it's angry. And it does show you what to expect from a person. If they're so upset about your decision, which makes logical sense, <laughs> then it shows you that this is more about them than about the baby, right? It's about what they want. And they're not able to put their wants aside for something that makes logical sense. But even if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't matter. And that's the point. Your boundaries are based on your own values. It doesn't have to make logical sense to them. They don't have to understand. And you don't have to do a lot of explaining. All you have to do is say it in a way that's respectful and stick to what you say. Now, one of the areas of boundaries that becomes very challenging for women who just gave birth are things that are a little bit more personal the sort of stigmas that come with decisions that you make as a mother. So this is something that I know personally I wasn't prepared for in terms of how people felt about the way that you raise your baby from day one. For example, breastfeeding versus formula. There is so much stigma out there about whether or not you should breastfeed or you should give formula and what happens if you choose to do one versus the other. So making sure that you know ahead of time what you want to share with people, because I think it can be quite hurtful if you didn't expect to be judged for something and you freely share it only to feel like maybe you're a bad mother or you're uneducated on something. So letting things be kind of fluid and vague. A lot of I'm not sure and I'm still thinking about it and we shall see. A lot of those statements is going to help to protect you from other people's opinions and judgments. Other things that come up are things like bed sharing. Okay, is your baby going to sleep in the bed with you or in a crib? Okay, we have lots of data about one versus the other. And again, these are 
personal decisions. And I know that, you know, people get very worked up over this. <laughs> and in the mom community, there are lots of discussions about all these different things. But ultimately, this is your life. This is your child's life. As long as you are educated and you're able to be at peace with your decisions, that's all that matters. For those of you who don't know, some other things that sort of come up are things like vaccination. Should your baby be vaccinated? Should you be vaccinated? Um, things like pacifiers. Should they have one? When should they have one? When should they stop using it? Are they sleeping in the same bedroom as you? Do they have their own room? Which one's better? Should they cry it out? Okay, If they're crying and crying and crying, should you attend to them or should you let them self-soothe? I mean, all of these things are conversations that come up and they're emotional. They're emotional for you as a parents because you want to do not only what's right, but what works for you and your unique child. And you also want to feel like you're supported in that. But when it comes to boundaries and when it comes to personal values, you do not have to be supported in things. You do what works for you and your unique situation. And you gain the strength and the courage to tell people to back off or to stand firm in your decisions whatever they are. Now, during this time in your life, you may end up having more triggers because again, pregnancy and childbirth, postpartum, they're all so emotional, right? So the thing that you don't want to do is to lash out at people or to do anything that you're going to regret in the future. That's why it's so important that with all of these things that you take time to think about it, to journal and to pray and to ask God for strength and to ask him for wisdom and discernment and just the ability to be able to make the right choices. It's so important for you to have peace. Stress is the number one problematic issue that comes with pregnancy and with postpartum. And we all know that postpartum depression is real. And it can come from a lot of things like people's behavior towards you, opinions, and things that are just not working for you. So having personal boundaries set up in all aspects of your journey is necessary, but having that spiritual relationship with God so that you know you have somewhere to go in difficult times, in times where you're afraid, in times where you need strength, being able to pray and ask the Lord for strength and ask him for the courage that it takes for you to be the person that he created you to be. And that's a woman who's able to have her own values, who's able to stand firm in what she believes, to be respectful to those around her, but also be open to listening and hearing what people have to say. Because at the end of the day, most of these people truly do care for you or truly just want to be helpful, but perhaps what they're doing or how they're doing it is not helpful. So I hope that this helps. I hope that it helped you to be able to sort of see this through a different lens and understand how important it is for you to have boundaries during your pregnancy journey, during your postpartum journey, for you to know that as a mom, you are doing your best. You are coming in this with hopes of being the best mother that you can be. And you do need to be able to set up sort of a guard around yourself to protect yourself from all the different things that could come up and to open yourself up to all the wonderful things that can come out of this special time in your life. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. And I know that it's been difficult. I know that it's scary sometimes to have boundaries. I know that you're trying to implement all of these things into your life. And with all of these things, it gets easier each time. And there will be violations that you say no to, and the person says, okay, and then turns back around and it's like, you didn't have the conversation and you're having it all over again. Okay. It happens because people are usually stuck in their ways. And sometimes you do have to get to the point where you do have to sort of distance yourself from people because they're not supportive or they are hurtful with their words. And yes, it does hurt to feel like, Maybe you've been rejected by someone because you spoke your mind. And for those of you who struggle with rejection because of things in your childhood and because you don't like people being upset with you, just remember that everyone has a decision to make and this is your life. You have to decide what works for you and you have to decide if you want to live in a place of peace or in a place of people pleasing. If you decide to people please, you will always be a slave to everyone else's thoughts and emotions. And those thoughts and emotions will always change and you'll be getting 
pulled and tugged and resentful because you can't speak up for yourself. But you can. It takes time. It takes practice. Whether you write it down first and then read it off to them on the phone, whether you send a text message because maybe you're not at the point yet where you can speak to them in person or on the phone, whether you know you say it through someone else, <laughs> you have to get to the point where it does eventually come from you. But there are baby steps that you can take to having your voice, gaining your voice back and using it for yourself and for your baby. I'm so proud of you and I'm so grateful that you're open to changing and learning and growing. And for those of you who are expecting a baby, congratulations. And I hope that the rest of your pregnancy journey goes great. Be brave. You can do this. Say what you have to say. Stand firm and keep pushing. I love you all and I will see you in the next video. Big kisses. Mwah. Be sure to listen to my podcast, A Feminine Impression, and make sure to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Michelle Daff and at A Feminine Impression. Remember that in all things you do, make a feminine impression. Bye-bye.